there are common shipping documents which is used in international trade so we start with draft which is also called as bill of exchange <clears throat> so this draft bill of exchange is similar to the check which you you might be holding so when you have a savings bank account with a bank so they will be issuing some checks for you <clears throat> so you can draw that favoring somebody else so you can pay using that then we have commercial invoice and uh, so in invoice where you stay you quote the currency amount quantity and who is the person who is selling that is seller then you mention the buyer and then sometimes few invoices they have the tenor like pay at sight or pay on 30 days bl something like that then common terms and conditions and uh, the other common documents you know which is prepared by beneficiary will be packing list so these are all very common documents which a beneficiary or a exporter prepares then we have famous third party documents called bill of lading used for sea transport then we have airway bill used for air transport then cmr or truck receipt so this one is used for road transport and then we have courier postal and also railway but rarely these means of mode or modes are used for international transport so whenever there is a landlocked area and whenever there is a you know mutual understanding between the nations say for example in europe european nations they are all landlocked so they have this rail transport and truck transport very common very often but uh, you know for other island nations or where they have where they don't have this road connectivity most of the times they will go for sea or air depending on the need and the freight cost okay then we have few other documents called certificate of origin and other certificates say for example quantity certificate quality certificate inspection certificate then we have uh, even beneficiary certificate sometimes beneficiary also certify something okay so these are all very common shipping documents involved in international trade and also involved under lc so our motto of this training is to prepare all these documents in a lc complying manner in a ucp complying manner so the main three things which we are going to achieve after this class or how you are going to support your company is preparing these documents satisfying the first set the two rules so lc rules ucp rules and third thing is internal consistency so when you represent or mention a data in a document that data has to be same in other documents accompanying that presentation say for example if draft has a purchase order number x y z 1 2 then if you are mentioning a purchase order in another document then that also has to be x y z 1 2 3 so if you mention a data which is inconsistent within the same document or even with other documents then that will also be picked as a discrepancy so these are all the three main things a document preparation or preparator has to note so a person who addresses all these three things will be able to prepare a complying presentation so that is what we are trying to achieve <clears throat> okay so here it is very easy for a person to understand what a bill of exchange will have what a invoice will have what a bill of lading will have because in uh, in google you can just search and you can get the format and you can fill it and transport companies also they have their own format insurance company they have their own format to issue a insurance certificate but 
the thing which is not known to many is the ucp rules so ucp gives 39 articles so ucp is a rule which is issued by international chamber of commerce whenever a lc issued applying the ucp rules then you need to see that all the articles given in ucp are followed say for example if you take bill of exchange <laughs> UCP does not have an article for this, but ISBP. So ISBP is a, another publication issued by ICC. So this ISBP explains the content which is given in UCP because for people to understand UCP is difficult. So each and every person they interpret in their own manner and producing different results. So to avoid this, ICC has issued this ISBP to clarify how one has to interpret. Okay, coming back to draft. So ISBP states few mandatory things which has to be there in the bill of exchange. And invoice, there is an article called Article 18 in UCP. So this one, not many will know what the mandatory contents in an invoice. And bill of lading, the articles 19 to 22 deals about it. So we have multimodal BL, we have ocean BL, then we have non-negotiable seaway bill, then we have charter party BL. Okay. So for you guys, I am going to deliver this in a mandatory points. So when you prepare a bill of exchange, when you prepare an invoice, you need not go and find out which is the article in UCP or which is the ISBP sub article which says about it. So I have combined the UCP and ISBP in this PDF. So in this PowerPoint PDF, I will share that to you. So in your going back to your job and when you prepare the documents or when you receive a bill of lading from the transport company, ensure that the thumb rule or the mandatory points which I am going to give are there. So this is what we, we are going to achieve. Okay. So with that, we are going to start this. I don't understand that, for example, the inside would have documents, LC sample MT 700 or 27 seconds of total for 40 a from form of documentary credit or something like that. I don't understand those are. So that sample LC I've just given that there are uh, certain fields. It's like a mini code, actually. Sorry? It's like a mini code, actually. Mini code? Yeah. It's easy to understand. For example, the... For example, I'm going to write in the 20. You understand what I say. It's something like that? Like a code? No, no. no it's not like that. So, uh, LC is, in fact, an instrument. So, you can consider that as a check. So if you mm. issue a check, you know that, right? What a check means? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So if you hold a bank account, so they will be mm -hmm. given a checkbook. So if you want to pay, you will write a check to that person, right? Yeah. So that check is actually called as bill of exchange or draft. So in other mm -hmm. sense, they call that as a financial document. Understand. So it's an instrument wherein a person can draw money using that. Okay, understand. Got now, it. Now, LC is also an instrument. This is also a financial document where a mm -hmm. bank is giving a irrevocable undertaking. This part you would have seen that. Okay. So that is mm -hmm. an instrument which is used in international trade. And whenever that instrument is issued using a SWIFT network, they have a designated fields. I understand. 20, 48, 49. Each and every field, they have their own, you know, need and actions need to be done. Okay, understand. For, for an exporter, when he receives the LC from the importer, he will go through it and he will understand port of loading. So that is where the goods will be starting and port of discharge. That is where the goods will go and end. 
and uh, you have a field like 44 or something like that uh, so oh, that's yes. about latest shipment date so which communicates to you as an exporter that you need to ship the goods before that date on or before that date okay so there are certain fields which they say we will again come across that so hopefully you will you will get that uh, doubt okay okay you will get that doubt clear otherwise we will have a separate uh, conversation no worries okay 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 so let's move on to draft so as i was saying draft is nothing but the bill of exchange it's a financial instrument okay okay so i'm going to show you a sample of it so this is a simple sample okay here the bill of exchange will say we'll have a conditional order that a person will order another person to per to pay a certain sum of money with a currency and it will have a tenor tenor is nothing but the period of payment so whether it is it has to be paid immediately or after certain days and it will have a issue date so this is coming under negotiable instrument and lot of countries they have their own act so most of the countries they have negotiable instrument act and there are certain mandatory fields already explained under the country of law okay and here ucp also follows that but additionally they clarify certain things so it is not totally against the country of law it will resonate the same way so most of the country of law will impose that a draft or a bill of exchange has to have certain things our UCP ISBP also says the same thing. So we are having six mandatory items in a bill of exchange. <clears throat> so when you handle a bill of exchange, when you are preparing a bill of exchange, ensure that all these six items are there. Okay. So that is what and our, so all your views, right, in this training, all your views should be in a way that you are going to prepare these shipping documents and I am going to give the mandatory rules. So you have to ensure all the things are there in the shipping document. Some third party documents will be received from other companies. So transport company and insurance company. So your job is to ensure that all the mandatory points are there. Okay, the outcome is you will consolidate all the shipping documents and you are going to present submit the documents to a bank <clears throat> so that bank will check whether it satisfies the lc and ucp condition so beforehand we are trying to achieve that the documents are prepared in a complaint presentation i'm i'm repeating i'm duplicating this because we need to understand what we are doing okay okay let's move on without wasting time so the first point the important thing is any bill of exchange has to have a issue date right so this is the issue date. So here we have issue date. So just simple, try to memorize it, try to take it into your mind so that you need not refer any handouts. But until some time, you can just keep referring this PDF. So the second point is currency and amount. So here there is an amount, but there is no currency. Now, if you present a bill of exchange in this way, the bank will say that, it will quote it as a discrepancy saying that bill of exchange or draft omits currency and they will send a refusal notice to you because of this discrepancy we are not in a position to take up we will not honor or negotiate we are refusing your presentation for just a single discrepancy banks will send a refusal they will reject you okay so they will reject the payment but the things are not going to end as you know that at one point of time trade will end smoothly. So the end will be applicant has to accept this discrepant document and issuing bank will collect a discrepancy fee and there will be a delay. So all these things will be there for you when you present a discrepant document. So we are, that is what we are trying to avoid. Now we have a draft which misses the currency. So now when you prepare you have to ensure that 
the currency and amount is there. And where do you go and check what is the currency? So all the currency, LC currency should be, the draft currency should be the LC currency. You cannot mention some other currency which is against the LC. So if, if your LC says USD, then it has to be USD. And it cannot be over and about your LC amount. Say for example, if your LC is stating USD 500,000, then your bill of exchange has to be for that amount or less than that. Because when you partially draw, so if 1000 metric ton is your quantity and if you are, yeah, Melis. Uh, thank you. I, I, I asked that one, for example, the currency or the total amount, whatever, the almost must USD, am I right? No, that's not the case. Even um, any currency, whatever uh, exporter and importer, they agree, it can be. It can mm -hmm. be in Euro, it can be in GBP, it can be in INR, B, whatever it may be. Okay. Yeah. So it has to be LC currency and uh, ensure that the amount is less than that. So if 1000 metric ton is the total LC quantity. So here you can see, for example, we will take this LC case. So 90 metric ton it is given here and 43p it says partial shipments allowed which means that you need not ship full 90 metric ton at one go. You can ship part shipments say for example 50 metric ton, 10 metric ton, 20 metric ton and 10 more. In any combination you can ship. So you can even ship 10 metric ton for nine times. So total will be 90 metric ton. So that is what partial shipments allowed. So that means that 90 metric ton, if you are shipping less, the total amount claimed under a bill of exchange draft will also be less. So ensure that the currency and amount matches your LC. It cannot be overdrawn or it can be drawn, it cannot be drawn on different currency. Now we, we talk about tenor. So tenor is again a mandatory requirement. So in this bill of exchange here, you can see at site. So at site means payment immediately. So when a bank determines the documents are clean, they have to honor or negotiate. This at site will be seen here. So in your LC, 41D will talk about this. So they are saying available with any bank, which means that the issuing bank, when issuing the LC, it says that any bank is authorized to handle the LC payment. And the payment will be by payment means site basis. So here they will say by acceptance. So acceptance, most of the time, there will be a draft involved and they will say 30 days BL date or 60 days BL date. And there will be another field in LC whenever a bill of exchange is involved. Okay. So in that field 42A. So that is a field. So in this sample LC, there is no involvement of bill of exchange. But in some other LC where you have a draft involvement, that will have field 42A. 42A will tell who is the drawee and the bank name also will be there. Okay. That is where they will say 60 days, 30 days, BL date, something like that. But in our sample case, this is by payment. By payment means site LC. So the third requirement, mandatory requirements, tenor has to be shown in the draft. So let us see the fourth one. So fourth one is nothing but payee. Payee means the eligible person to receive the money. So in this case, in LC, exporter will be the beneficiary person, beneficial person to receive the money. So payee will be given as here. So here you can see pay to the order of Tokyo AI ML bot trade. So in this draft sample, this fellow is the person who is going to receive money. Okay. Most of the times, 80 or 90 percent. Okay. It will be beneficiary's name, but sometimes there will be a bank involvement where bank may negotiate. Negotiate is nothing but paying the money upfront. If 60 days bill of lading date 
is the tenor the confirming band or the negotiating nominated band they may be willing to pay on day 1 and they will debit the interest charges so in that case the bank may ask to draw in their favor so here that confirming bank's name will be there because they have already paid the money to the exporter so the money which is going to come from importer is the money of confirming bank's money so here it will be that the bank's name will be there but ensure that under lc it will be always most of the times beneficiary's name will be there but do not worry even if bank's name is there not a problem and let us move on to the next mandatory point sometimes here they will say pay to the order of us us in the sense it will refer to the drawer so here you need to note one thing drawer and payee will be same so drawer is the person who is ordering the drawee to pay certain amount so the drawer in this scenario in exporter exporting a goods under lc the exporter will be the drawer because he is the person authorized to receive the money for the goods he is selling and the issuing bank is the liable person in fact the end liable person is applicant but we are weeding out applicant in the lc cycle because when lc is issued it will be the issuing bank and beneficiary applicant will not be a party to the credit so that is the reason the beneficiary will order the issuing bank so here the drawer will order the issuing bank to pay this 10 million okay to himself most of the times it will be himself it, it will be the beneficiary itself but as i told it can be even for banks also when they have negotiated or nominated banks which they you know prepay the money any doubt here any doubt guys no thank you no no okay so pay and draw i have just introduced draw i is the person who has to pay so in your uh, in in our previous example where we were saying the savings bank account which a individual is maintaining he will be having the check book there you will be the drawer and your savings bank where you are maintaining your savings account that person will be the drawer because he will be holding your money even though it is your account the bank will be holding so you you will order your savings bank to pay the other person see for example when you are paying your utility bills you are paying for your uh, internet bill okay so you will order your bank to pay the internet service provider likewise here the exporter which is the beneficiary of the lc will order the issuing bank which is issuing the lc to pay the payee so payee will be mostly beneficiary as i told but here drawee will not always be issuing bank sometimes it will be confirming bank also or it can be even the accepting bank so any bank can honor or negotiate so that is how you know the issuing bank will make the lc available here so when the lc is available with any other bank that bank can honor or negotiate okay so they are willing to facilitate the payment here even though primary liability is with issuing bank to facilitate the payment because beneficiary all the way it has to send the documents directly to issuing bank which is sitting in some other country and issuing bank straight away it has to send the money to the beneficiary which is cumbersome so there need to be a usage of another bank and we have also seen the usage of advising bank so without that a beneficiary cannot receive a swift message issuing bank can send it via courier the you know printing the swift pdf but again beneficiary will have a doubt whether it is actually the issuing bank sent it or not so we use advising bank so likewise advising bank can take up another roles like nominated bank confirming bank okay so to facilitate the trade 
the trade here instead of any bank they may even restrict to a particular bank so most of the times a confirming bank it will want to restrict the lc to them okay so here they may say hsbc singapore and the confirmation will be done by that bank so hsbc singapore singapore will add the confirmation and it may negotiate so the beneficiary will have two undertakings one from issuing bank and another from confirming bank okay so now draw e most of the times it will be issuing bank because issuing bank is the primary liable person but when the cycle requires another bank to participate and do some role like advancing prepaying adding confirmation okay or an just a nomination so to to pay the side bill and claim the reimbursement from issuing bank so likewise draw e can be changed but it will be the person who is paying who is going to pay the payee mentioned in the draft okay then we have the sixth mandatory item which is very important drawer name and signature so drawer always the drawer will be the beneficiary so it will be the lc beneficiary and it has to sign most of the times bill of exchange they forget to sign but they will mention the drawer name but they will forget the signature so this also will be called as a discrepancy bill of exchange not signed so now we have six mandatory items ensure that your bill of exchange whenever you are preparing has the six mandatory items definitely it has to have a issue date and it has to have a amount which is matching the lc and the presentation so in if lc may be for 1 million but your invoice will be for lesser value so the claim value has to be there here so if your invoice is for 50000 then your bill of exchange also has to have a 50000 and definitely the currency also should be lc currency here it is missing so but ensure that you are doing it and the third one is tenor so if it is site if lc is for site mention it as site if it is 30 days bl date then mention that it is 30 days bl date and here there is a catch you need to note whenever there is a use on bill so 30 days bl or 60 days bl what isbp says is on the face of the document itself you need to calculate the maturity date you should not refer some other document say for example if our lc is having a tenor 30 days bl date okay so what people will say people will just mention here 30 days bl simply they will mention bl but where is the bl date the bl date is not mentioned so we will think we will feel that the bl is going to be with the presentation anyway it will be presented to the bank and bank can take the bl and see the bl date so what is issue in that what's the big de deal in it but isbp says that you know while calculating a maturity date it will not go and refer some other document even though it is there in their hand even though it is forming part of the same presentation so now if 30 days bl is mentioned additionally somewhere they have to mention bl date as say for example second uh, july 21 they have to mention this way or instead of mentioning bl they can mention 30 days second july 21 okay or even they are saying say for example instead of issue date of the draft is 1st july if just consider it as 2nd july 2nd july is actually the bl date so now it can say 30 days date so 30 days date is nothing but 30 days from the issue date and if it is bl date then this can also be considered as a valid presentation okay now the take away is on seeing only the bill of exchange face of the draft you should be able to calculate the maturity date okay if that is possible then it is fine clear guys yeah it is 
Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you. So now the fourth item we have seen issue date, mandatory one, currency and amount, tenor, then the payee. So this payee is there. So ensure that some payee name is there. Most of the times it will be beneficiary. Sometimes it will be bank. Okay. So that is fine if it has a payee. Then the fifth item is drawee. So drawee will be given in your LC. So ensure that the LC mentioned the drawee is given here. So it has to have this word too. Or you mention it as drawee. Some way. Simply mentioning a name will be considered as discrepancy. Okay. Some way you have to mention it as drawee or this bill of exchange and it will be you know read accordance with this bill of exchange drawn to so somehow it will be related if you simply mention name that will be called as a discrepancy okay so now we have found five and the last one is the drawer so the last one is the drawer and ensure that the drawer name is there and the beneficiary Signature is there and drawer always it has to be the beneficiary. Okay. So this is where you can find the beneficiary 59 beneficiary and ensure that there is no spelling mistake. Even if you may miss one U. So in this M U A Y in the middle name, if you miss U or if you type it wrongly, still that will be considered as a discrepancy and especially for names ensure that you don't uh, you know involve any spelling mistakes for other words for goods name say see for here shrimps if you just missed s it's fine or for shrimps if you miss h it is fine unless until the nature of the goods like the purpose of the you know word which it refers is not changed, that is fine. See, if you are applicant, if you miss any P, so it is not going to make a material change. It is not going to change your goods at all. But if you change or miss anything in the name, then definitely there could be another person in this name. See, for shrimp, if you miss H and if it reads shrimp, again, there can be another person in that name. So that is the reason it is very crucial. So don't make any spelling mistakes in the name. So now we have drawer and signature. So these are all the six mandatory things which has to be there. So another thing I need to tell you is, so 10 million is here. Sorry, 10 million. So now there is, that will be most of the times which will be given in words also. Ensure that both the figures and words. So amount in figures and words should be same. Sometimes due to copy paste or due to editing the old uh, bill of exchange, they will forget to change this amount and on this figure only they will change. So ensure that you are not missing this out. And for currency requirement, it can be either given here or it can be given either here. at any one place. If you are mentioning, then it is fine. It will be considered as a valid presentation. Okay, so so we'll we'll additionally see few other things in bill of exchange and then we'll move to the next document invoice. So with invoice, we will we will complete it. So the third document for today is packing list. Packing list doesn't have much, so it will take two or three minutes to complete. So once we complete draft, we'll move to invoice, and with that, we will wind up this today's session. Okay, there are a few other things we need to note in bill of exchange. So blank endorsement. So endorsement is nothing but, you know, these, this document bill of exchange is a negotiable document. Negotiable means when you endorse on the back of the instrument, then you can transfer the title to another person. See, if you have to pay someone, you can give him a cash or you can write a check. So that person who holds the check will be called the holder of the check. And he is eligible to withdraw that money. And that person who holds the money, if he wants to pay another person, what he can do, instead of paying a cash, he can endorse, further endorse that check to the third person. 
so the check the title of the check the amount mentioned in that check is being moved negotiated to another person so like this n number of person can come see so blank endorsement means just simply mentioning two order and endorsing if they mention specific name two order of sadi so it is specific endorsement without the name if they simply mention two order it is blank endorsement so the 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 role or act of a blank endorsement is whoever holds the blank endorsed instrument can go and withdraw the money another thing is straight endorsement straight endorsement means it will not be having a negotiability so try to remember blank endorsement and straight consignment okay so we are going to discuss this again back in bill of lading and also in insurance law okay so let us discuss back and just put this in your mind and try to achieve it if you get any doubt just ping me we will discuss it further okay and apart from all these six mandatory items your lc may call for some other additional things and this is not only for bill of exchange lc can ask for any any type of information okay so most of the times it will be in the 47a additional condition here they will say a bill of exchange has to have lc number okay say sometimes i will just mention you uh, yeah if you can see the second freight amount to be mentioned in invoice so apart from the requirement here in 46a for invoice they are additionally giving a requirement for invoice say for example if you remove invoice and replace it with bill of exchange then it will say freight amount to be mentioned in bill of exchange so this is a requirement in bill of exchange which is additional to the six mandatory things so likewise lc can ask for any additional requirement and that has to be satisfied so when you prepare bill of exchange you ensure that all the six things are done and additionally go through the lc once again if there is any additional conditions to be followed it is not only that you know you show a lc number you show a freight amount you show the lc date or you show the you know bin number tin number tax number it is not only showing something it will also tell that do not show something okay your lc will say bill of exchange must not contain lc number bill of exchange must not contain a unit price and very importantly it will say that bill of exchange should not be dated prior to lc issue date so these are all additional condition which you need to see so once you prepare finally go through the lc and look for the additional conditions and ensure that it is satisfied okay and in bill of exchange there should not be any correction ensure that there is no correction at all okay uh, middle east countries they won't even accept a bill of exchange which is corrected and which is properly authenticated so as a beneficiary you made some mistake you corrected it and you also endorsed on the side for the correction still middle east countries they will say even in lc itself they will specifically mention you know bill of exchange should not have any corrections at all. so ensure that you prepare the bill of exchange without any correction most of the countries they accept with proper authentication 